Did you hear about this quarantine thing? My brother Josh and I have been doing our part in staying in. But after a few days inside, we were beginning to lose our minds. So, to keep ourselves occupied, we organized the hackathon and invited everyone in my one-bedroom Seattle apartment to come join in the fun. And, after preparing the traditional hackathon meal, donning the traditional hackathon garb, and sitting down for a rousing keynote speech, it was time to get hacking. Our plan was simple. If we couldn't visit our friends, maybe we could bring our friends to us. By injecting their consciousnesses into a homemade telepresence robot, and after digging through what might be the world's most disorganized parts bins and getting thoroughly distracted, things really started to come together. While I designed the 3D model, Josh got busy writing the code, which checks the volume of a person's voice several times a second and varies the mouth angle accordingly. The eyes were a little more complicated. After cracking two of them open, we realized we'd need to make something to connect each servo to the back of each eye. Just like I did for Karaoke Vibe, we used cable ties and screws to make hinges, then latched them onto the 3D printed eye connectors. Around this time, I finished up the face and sent some pictures off to my friends to get their opinions. They hated it. If this bot was meant to fill in for a human, we had to make it at least a little more friendly. So to really give it that human touch, we tried adding a mustache. But that might have made it even creepier. And after a few quick animation tests, it was time to mount the face in its new body, an IKEA lamp whose warranty had just been voided. With time to spare before our final presentation to the judges, our neighbor Tanner texted us with an idea. Customizable hats. And where the mustache failed, hats succeeded. We made a top hat and a wizard hat. And after a few painful minutes trying to model a cowboy hat, we just gave up and grabbed the first model off Thingiverse. With our three hats printing, we set the stage for our judges and eagerly awaited their call. After an inspirational reading from the Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago, <laughs> when our forefathers it was time to put our robot to the test, using real, human consciousnesses. After some playful banter from the judges, Dude, you got like an April O'Neil outfit? Oh, oh, geez, gorgeous handlers. We explained our concept. When you talk, its mouth moves, and it feels like you're here with us. And they seemed really impressed. Um, terrifying. That thing is so creepy. A lot of people have been saying that. What if I told you that there are several selectable hats? Ooh, oh, that's nice. I'll do the cowboy hat. Feeling confident in our showing, we awaited the judge's final verdict. Is this like first place? It's something that's very worth being proud of. You get a, a special award just for that. But there was one thing that felt even better than winning. Even though we were trapped inside, we made some great memories with our friends. And even though there was something really serious going on outside, for a little while, <laughs> we totally forgot about it and just had fun building a robot. I'm on Patreon. Here's a link to my blog. Shout out to my best friends for helping me along.